and it's between Thomas Huxley, who is a sort of protege of Charles Darwin. Yes, and so the the newly uh, the newly discovered idea of natural selection mm-hmm. is being defended by Huxley, and then you've got the Bishop Wilberforce who is arguing against it, and this is again seen as archetypal science, evolution, undeniable fact versus the yeah, that's right. The priest but it's that very can't interesting. accept it. I've read the whole debate, uh-huh. and I find that many people haven't. Mm. And <laughs> Wilberforce was the kind of cleric who was an amateur scientist, mm-hmm. and uh, he seemed to have a lot of leisure for doing that, which might tell us something about the church in those days. Right. And Huxley was dead against this. He wanted a professional class of scientists. That's Mm -hmm. the first. There was a strong bias against it. But when it came to the argument, I was fascinated to discover that very early on in his speech, Wilberforce said, I am not going to use religious arguments. Mm. I am only going to discuss the science. That's often left completely out of the discussion. Mm-hmm. And again, uh, it was, oh, what was his name? The professor of the history of science at the Open University said that this event should not be used to drive a wedge between science and Christianity. It was a much more complex thing. It was a sociological thing as well. Yeah. The push to have professional scientists get rid of the clerics, turn the churches into temples to Sophia, the goddess of wisdom, and all this kind of stuff. There was much more going on than simply dealing with science. 